Hi, in this video I'm going to do video problem 4 and this problem is basically taking the previous type of problem where you have the projectile motion but now we're going to allow it to just kind of fall beyond the cliff right here. So that's the extra added step. Um, the good news is most of this is actually just repeating what we've done before and the problem is a little longer. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about what happens, um, let's see, so we need the time it takes to hit point P, so the time it takes to fall. We need the range, how far did it go. Uh, we need the horizontal vertical components of the velocity, which we'll calculate. The magnitude of the velocity angle made when it hits the bottom here. And then the maximum height it reached. So we have a couple things like this. So as in any problem, you want to break it down into useful parts and then treat it as two separate um, parts like our motion. So when I have a problem that has a, a launch projectile off a cliff, I usually cut it off about right here because this part right here, I'll call it part one, basically acts as a projectile problem that we've done in class. The object goes to here, it lands back on the ground if this were the ground. So that's part one. Then part two, um, I don't know why I wrote that as part two. Let's write that as part one. There we go. Then we're going to treat this section of the, the, the motion right here, so parts two. Now this almost acts like that free fall problem where we go up and down, but now we just have two components of velocity. So that's how I'll do this problem. Since we're finding out basically everything, there is really no specific way to do this. So you can do this problem in any order. Um, but I usually like to try to find time at various locations because if I know the time, I could probably figure out most of the other information. So first and foremost, as always, anytime you have a projectile launch at an angle, you must absolutely find the Vx and the Vy. So this is moving at 65 meters per second. The Vy and the Vx are parts of this triangle right here, where this represents the 37. So Vx is going to be the cosine piece of this triangle, so it's going to be 65 meters per second times cosine 37 degrees. So 65 times cosine 37 Looking at all my information, I get 51.91. I'm just going to verify that calculation. Cosine 37 times 65. And just verifying that I am in degree mode, I get 51.91. Vy is a similar calculation, but we're going to use the sine component. Now, hopefully, your trig, so 37, um, you convince yourself that I am solving the opposite part of a triangle here. This is the opposite. So I'm using sine because opposite over hypotenuse is sine of the angle. And when I rearrange, I get this. So my Vy is going to be 65 times sine 37, 39.12. Oops, 1, 2 I said, right? One, two, correct, meters per second. Okay, so I'm just going to write these in a nice, neat form. In fact, actually, I can even put it in our little chart right here for later. So X and Y. My initial, well, my VX stays constant. So this number I can use it. Oh, let me write down the right number, right? <laughs> VX, sorry, is 51.91. Since the x motion is constant the whole time, I can always reference this number for the x direction like that, meters per second. Now the initial velocity at the launching point is our 39.12 meters per second there. So that is very important because I need these values because I cannot use 65 at all. So, you know, whatever you do to help you do this, we're done with that. All right, so we need time, range, height, all this fun stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do is start off in section one. I'm just going to take it out of the problem down here and treat this like 
it was launched off the ground here. So my y initial velocity is going to be 39.12 meters per second. Now, if it lands at this exact point, we can always make the assumption that the y velocity is the same value but negative, as so long as it lands in the same spot. So that's pretty good right there. So what I'm going to do is find at least how far, I'll find all the information because we're going to need it for later. How long, how far, and how high. So let's go with time first. So I'm going to figure out how long it takes to make the arc. So when I do that, I like to use vy final equals vy initial plus at. That's a really nice equation because we have two velocities acceleration so if you want to kind of um, let me move this out of the way for a quick second remember that you always have acceleration as 9.81 in the y direction so this is another piece of information you have that's not given in the problem but assumed you know so i'm going to go ahead and do that so i'm going to treat this as my final point here so negative 39.12 meters per second equals positive 39, the initial, plus negative 9.81 t. So this is the time for the arc, so this is the full time. When I solve this out, I got the following. I'm just going to do a calculation now. So it's um, pretty far, pretty long, 7.98 seconds like that. Okay, So that's the time it takes to make this full arc. So what I can do from that is find the range of the arc because now I have the time it takes to make the arc. So with that said, um, range is an x measurement so the only equation we can use is that vx is equal to x like that. Vx comes from the velocity in the x direction, so that's the 51.91. And we need the time it takes to make the arc, which is this number, which is really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply that out. So I get an x distance, 414. 0 0.01 meters. So I just calculated the distance from here to here. Um, I'll write it 414.01 meters. So this whole thing right here. So that's a good um, piece of information. Now I'm going to calculate the height that this got to. So sorry, I went through that. So height, remember, is going to be a um, a vertical measure. So I'll use the symbol y to represent that. So that's okay um, when it comes to using your kinematics if it's x or y as long as you know what you're solving for. So we need the time at this um, that maximum height here. And if you notice just by visually looking at this you can make the assumption that it happens at the halfway point. So time at the maximum height it's going to be this value divided by 2. So 7.98 divided by 2, 3.99 seconds. It's so close to 4, so why don't we just go ahead and do that because it's easier. All right, it takes 4 seconds to get to that point. If I want a value um, of height, so delta, I'll use delta y for the height. I can actually use a few different approaches. Um, we do also know that at the top of that peak will be zero in the y direction as well. So you, there is multiple ways you can do this. You can use v, um, vy squared equals uh, vy final squared equals vy initial squared plus one half uh, plus a. Well, I'm sorry, I won't. You could use this. Why do I write it instead of saying it? So silly. As one method, as long as you have the um, the velocities, which you do appear in here. If you have acceleration, you can solve for that. You can use this one, delta y is equal to vi y 
plus t, uh, vyyt, sorry, let me take a step back, plus one half at squared. You can tick, you can use any of these. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, since I found the time for the halfway point, to do this. If you notice, you don't have to do and find time, but I did it as a good step to see anyway. So let's go ahead and do this. The initial y, I'll start as 39.12. So notice that writing it there is really helpful because then you can reference it. This is 4 seconds. So how long does it take to get to that point? Plus 1 half negative 9.81 times 4 seconds squared. Now this negative is important because what's going to happen is this part is going to be negative and this part is going to be positive. So I'm going to do it in steps to show you that. And then I'm going to do the second part now. And remember that this part will be negative. So a very common mistake people make is, you know, they forget the negative and add this in. And of course the answer is wrong because you've actually said the object sped up over time instead of slowed down, which of course is not what's happening here. Um, and what you get when you solve this out is 78. And notice that it's positive, which is good because it means it's rising, which it is. So this represents 78 meters like that. Okay, so we found all of the information for the arc at this point, so that's very good. So we, uh, <laughs> if you look at this, right, I only have this section of the problem, and it wants not just this, it wants the total x here. So if you watch what I do, if I do this, we found this was the 414 meters, roughly, from here to here. And we just found the height right here, which is 78. The good news is we have the total height now because it's basically going to be the 125 plus the 78, which was um, the maximum height above. So we got that. Um, I'll write down it in numerical ways. But now we have to treat this section here because we need the x right here um, so we can find out the total range. We also need the velocity at the bottom in the y because it changes because it gets faster here. So it's not going to be the negative 39 that's up here. It's going to be different. So we need to find that out. And then once we have that, we'll have, um, I think we needed the time. So we can find all the rest of the piece of information. So let me just go ahead and do mathematically what we just solved for for the height. And then on the second video, I'll go and continue and do the, um, do the rest of the problem. So the maximum height would be the 78 from the arc plus the 125 from the cliff. Two oh three. So there you go. That's uh, one of the questions there. All right. So the next video, I'll show you how to do the second part.